What is going on guys and welcome into the video. Well, you guys have been asking for it, so I need to cover it because boy, were there some massive misses in regards to Google, Amazon, and Meta that absolutely changed how I view these businesses. It is ugly out there to say the least the past week or so, and not just in the normal kind of ugly way this year has been, we are talking about disasters like you rarely see, so we needed to discuss it all. I just ask an exchange for you to gently tap that like button and consider subscribing too. It's super easy to do if you like the truth without the hype. So let's discuss the earnings calls from Google, Amazon, and Meta and get into all the details. Actually, before we do that, I figured I'd let you guys know we will be having a live Q&A in about three hours or so to answer your specific questions about these earnings, about Tesla, the economy, or anything else. And don't worry if you can't make it, you can watch the replay too, as I'm sure many will have the same questions that you have and will probably ask so you can just watch the replay. So if you want to take part in this Q&A, make sure you take advantage of the spooky sale that ends tomorrow to join the Market Insiders private group, where you get full and direct access to me in these Q&As, in my DMs and all over our Discord, and you get five courses for free on building wealth, how to invest, how to build up cash and buy real estate, and also how to buy stocks, obviously, and you see everything I buy and sell in real time, and you get my watch list with price targets, and we have tons of exclusive videos and tutorials to further your skill set, and a ton more in there. So check out the website to at least see what is offered and to get your free download that's there for you as well as a free gift from me to you. All right, on to the juicy stuff since that is what we are all here for and what we wanna talk about. So let's start with Google first since it's actually the easiest of the bunch to discuss. Yes, Google has some headwinds and we all know exactly what they were. Everyone knows that ad spend is going to be down and will be down as the economy continues to slow, so there's honestly no surprise there at all. But valuations always matter in the stock market in the end, and Google has not traded this cheap from a valuation perspective since June of 2012. Over a decade ago was the last time you could buy Google this cheap. Is Google a better business by every metric from a decade ago? And will Google be a better business three to five years from now? No question about it for me. So this one to me was a no brainer to buy the dip at $92. And I will continue to add Google moving forward if it continues to stay this cheap. So next up, let's talk about Amazon. Wall Street is actually funny and so are reaction videos to earnings and the talking heads on TV too. Amazon has run the business the same way for over 20 years now. They basically build out far more infrastructure than makes sense. They push out the latest and greatest tech with everything they do, and they spend almost every dime trying to improve the business and the customer experience. Which means they have quarters like this and years like this where the numbers are just ugly, but they are ramping up for bigger and better things. But you know, Wall Street just dumps on them and says it's over, their growth is over, until it's actually not. And then Amazon goes on a killer run once all the money spent expanding basically kind of comes back to them. Then they're kind of the darlings of Wall Street and Amazon doubles up super fast, only to repeat the process again where everyone wonders what is wrong with Amazon again? Rinse and repeat. So we are in one of those times where they spent all the money made by the explosion during the lockdowns to do exactly this again, and we are seeing those results of all that expansion. Yes, I expect the numbers to slow as the economy does, and there's nothing unusual or crazy given that the Fed is actively trying to slow the economy down. But do I think less people will buy less stuff on Amazon over the next three to five years? Zero chance of that in my opinion. So what I'm planning to do with Amazon is honestly quite simple. Amazon's forward PE is 48 right now, which as you can see right here, it's cheaper than it's been the past seven years. Could it get cheaper? Sure it could, but I'm not a market timer and I know to be patient with a stock like Amazon. So I bought a ton more shares at $93 and some of our members actually got shares in the 80s in the aftermath of all that aftermarket freakout that went down. And with Amazon already being well over $100, I think everyone is quite happy with the aftermarket buys. And yes, I will continue to add shares as we move forward at my price targets. So finally, we have the most controversial and divisive stock of the group, and that would be Meta. Now to be clear, I have no concerns with Google or Amazon. I mean, zero, none. And I think we will look back at these opportunities that we are getting today and realize what an opportunity it actually was. But Meta does not fall into that same category at all. You had virtually every metric you can measure down from the financial side of the house. I'm not going to argue that here at all. And there were a ton of problems and many great videos out there covering that. So there's no point in rehashing all that here as it would basically take another 20 minutes to dig into it all. 
But that's not the only reason why Wall Street dumped the stock as big as it did. The reason why Wall Street actually dumped the stock so hard is because not only did Meta tell investors they are staying the course with the metaverse, they actually put a number on it and the price tag is massive, a lot bigger than what they're spending right now. And you gotta also keep in mind, some large institutional shareholders of Meta had strongly kind of, you know, encouraged Meta management to kind of tone down the metaverse stuff and shift the focus to monetization of, monetization if I could talk, to shift the focus to monetization of the other platforms that they have. Which Zuck and company kind of gave them the finger and did the exact opposite. So I do think some of those large institutions kind of dumped a lot of those shares in response to that. So that kind of begs the question, is Meta done as a company? I mean, if Wall Street institutional buyers are bailing out on Meta, should we be bailing out too? On the surface, that makes perfect sense. And to be honest, Meta went from a slam dunk, no brainer to add to like Amazon and Google are at these prices, to something very different altogether. So I totally understand if this isn't right for you since you thought you owned a stock like Google or Amazon and the company changed and that's not the case anymore. So what exactly is the opportunity then if there's any opportunity at all? Well, let's play out the two most probable scenarios and see where it lands us. So scenario number one kind of plays out like this. If Meta is right about the metaverse in the future, there is no doubt in my mind they will be the leader by a thousand miles and everyone will be playing catch up. The gap will be wider than Tesla has with the EV right now. Meta will basically be the Tesla of the metaverse, which means not only does Meta return to its historical average PEs of the kind of, the, you know, the upper 20s to the lower 30s, but it may even warn a multiple like it had when Facebook was crushing everyone in the social media space as it went kind of from a fad, you remember all that sort of stuff with MySpace and all that stuff, that was basically never gonna go anywhere, to a multi-trillion dollar business that Facebook had a massive lead on and honestly still does over everybody else. Which if that becomes the case, that PE would be in the 70s or the 80s. So looking at Meta being at a roughly a 10 right now, that means you are getting Meta ridiculously cheap today. If the metaverse plays out, this will be that time, like after the tech bubble, where you could have bought Apple at 18 cents per share, adjusted for you know the splits and all that sort of stuff that's happened over time, or Amazon at 40 cents a share after splits or those stocks like that. But that is if the metaverse plays out and is the future of the internet, and if Meta is the clear leader, that's where that's coming from. But let's look at the other side of the coin too, since it's obviously completely possible. What if the metaverse fails and goes nowhere and is a complete flop? Well, let's play it out using this quarter's earnings. So let's say the numbers stay the same. I mean, the ratios, the spending on the metaverse, everything. And on this earnings, Zuck says he was wrong and you know, the metaverse is basically a bust. So he's basically ditching the metaverse. So now assuming everything stays the same, I mean, no growth, no nothing, just removing kind of the metaverse stuff from the bottom line. What does that do to the company? Suddenly that $4 billion burned on the metaverse goes to the bottom line. And a good piece of the spending on plant and equipment to support this effort stops as well. And a good chunk of the employees working on that project are honestly going to go away. I mean, sure, some will stay, but they increased overhead massively to support this effort. So a 20% reduction in the workforce is not out of the question at all and would add significantly to the bottom line. Because it's not like he hired cheap folks, guys. These are the top of the top in terms of, you know, working in that space. What does that do to EPS? And then what does it do to the valuation more importantly and all the rest of the numbers? Remember, Meta actually grew their user base last quarter. They are just now starting to figure out how to monetize Reels and WhatsApp as well is also starting to be monetized more. So there are growth opportunities there despite the fact they have like 3 billion users or something. Meta is one of only a handful of companies I can think of that prints so much money that the management team can go on this crazy $100 billion spending spree or more, and if it totally fails, the company does not go under at all because the massive margins on all the other lines of businesses don't disappear if that happens. They actually grow exponentially when you kind of flip that switch and quit messing around over here with the metaverse and actually start pouring you know, all your energy and all your effort into making these things better. Seriously, there are maybe three companies in the world that have this ability and Meta is one of them. Last time Meta was this cheap, it was 2015 and they had an EPS of 25 cents per share. Today, with all the disaster that we just witnessed and just basically lighting money on fire, it's over five times that amount. And if you just take out the metaverse spending for this quarter, the EPS is just insane. And I mean, never mind the cost of reducing the overhead, the capex, and all the other cash drains in addition to the brain drains this project has taken from the company. So to me, Meta has kind of morphed into a long high growth play 
But unlike a high growth stock, it has a safety net of basically printing money regardless in the long run, even if the metaverse flops completely. Now, yes, my money may basically be dead money in the stock market for a few years, but either way, in my opinion, I will make money long term if the metaverse hits, obviously, or if they have to revert back to just being a cash printing machine. The question really is, will it hit the bottom of that range and, you know, kind of the worst case scenario, or will it make me a small fortune? Now, this stock is not right for everyone. I agree completely, and I could be wrong, too. I mean, honestly, that's the honest truth. But for me, I like the risk reward, so I added shares at $104 and $98, respectively, after the earnings. So hopefully this was helpful. And if you don't know how to get a price target or how to do a valuation and want a step-by-step -step process for doing that, building wealth, and you want direct access to me and much more, remember to check out the pinned comment down below to become a member and at least look at everything you get. And click this video here for the stocks I'm still buying in this market and click here for exactly what I'm doing to make huge money in this market. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.